What's up, fellas? So today is October 9, 2015. As you guys saw yesterday, as a matter of fact, let me show you guys the cars first. There are still three, six cars here at the Penny Pack Creek. It is Friday. Yesterday I, yesterday, I came here to the creek, caught my limit, three trout. Today, I will be attempting to do the same thing. So, you know, let's just keep all the introductions and uh, the setup. I'm using the same setup as yesterday. Shimano Sedona 500 FD with the Daiwa Spingmatic. 12 pounds Berkeley Vanish Fluoro Carbon Line with a small size 6 hook and a floating power ball. All right. I'm going to start with the power base, the Berkeley products, see how it goes. If I can't catch anything on it, because, you know, today the population should be pretty much depleted. They don't stock as much fish for fall to start with. And, you know, people yeah, pretty much take everything on the first two days, right? I mean, that's what is supposed to happen. They are stock trout. They're not native or wild. They were stocked here for people to take them home to eat, right? So today there should be only a few left. <laughs> so we will see. I, I, I'm not too confident that I'll be able to catch my limit today. But we will see how it goes. I'll keep you guys updated. It would be easier. What size? Like 10. Well, you, don't mind. you have a 10? Yeah, please, give me a 10. Finicky fish like this, you gotta be able to cover the whole hook, you know? Thank you very much, man. Lifesaver. Can you give me, can you pass me one? Wait, how did you open this stuff? Oh, I see. <laughs> Thank you very much. Now you will see me land it, the land of fish. I'm not kidding, man. I'm serious. People think it's BS, you know, that changing a little size hook doesn't really influence anything. It influences big time in trout fishing. Kishon. What did I tell you? <laughs> what did I tell you, huh? Changing the size hook, what does it happen? Yeah. All right, this one was caught on a piece of kernel corn. As soon as I changed from the size H to the size 10 and I covered the whole hook, dude hit it. Can you believe it? There we go, beautiful rainbow trout, huh? You know? It's like, yeah. Right over here. Is it? Fish on. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah. Fish number two of the day. Nice one here. Yeah. Give me one thing. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Look where I'm going to chum, okay? Right here. 
Go, 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 man. Yeah, let it sink naturally. Release line. Close the bail. All right. There we go. You got it on? Your drag. Set your drag close. You gotta let it run. <laughs> oh, come on, man. It's trout. Yeah, that's like what? Your first trout ever, right? Yeah. Yeah. Dinner, man. Pack it. Yeah, there we go. Matt catching his first trout on the corn. I'm pretty much just teaching him the technique. Nice one, too. Oh, did you lose it? No, my drag is really loose. Come on, man! You're gonna close. Come on! It's all right. It's Matt's, it's Matt's first trout, so you know. All right, bring it over. Yeah, good stuff, man. That's a nice size too. No, I don't really like people, but... Oh no, no! Don't really. Just keep it. Believe me, it's gonna, it's gonna die even if we release it, man. Yo, we take a photo, you know. Oh, yeah, All right, folks, so I'm fishing here at the painting factory today with my friend Matt, as you guys saw. I've already caught my limit of three fish per day, so I'm done fishing for today. Uh, just got to give you guys an overview of the technique that we've been using. We started the day with power bait, but power bait didn't really work. So what we did, we switched to kernel corn, all right? This kernel corn, you can buy in any market, just a can of kernel corn. The technique that we are using is a little bit sophisticated, okay? It is sophisticated in a sense that trout are very, very worried of gravity as a fish. So if you tie a single kernel corn on your hook and you throw it in the water, the trout will actually not eat it because it will know that it's not sinking naturally. What you need to do, you need to do it just like you do with carping. You need to chum two to three pieces of corn together with the corn on your hook. So you get the trout into a feeding frenzy, you attract them to your spot, and then they will hit the corn on your hook. Matt is tying a hook right now. We are using a hook size number 10, you know, regular eagle claw hook. And once he's done, we're going to show you already how it's done. Kernel corn. I just don't want to like stink up. All right. Room. Wait, wait. I don't really have a play knife. Wait, wait. Oh, that's a big one. Dude, there are two or three of them. All right, go. The timing is essential for yeah. trout on the corn. Well, I don't see your corn anymore, but I don't know if I the fish it. got it or not. No? Oh. Yeah. There we go. Second trout of the day, man. Trout on the corn. Yeah, beautiful. Smaller, but whoa, whoa. All right, this is dead, man. So make sure you don't drop it, all right? Make sure you don't drop it, man. Get a hang of it. That's why you gotta use power bait here, or else you're gonna keep catching those little, the monster. little guys. Oh, common shiner. Ooh. Yeah, there we go. Common shiner from the Penny Pack Creek, on the corn. Yeah, on the corn, my friend. Common shiner. I actually have never caught a common shiner at the Penny Pack Creek. Here's your chance, Leo. Ah, uh, I, I, I'm fine, man. Making hit that noise. Yeah. All right, folks, final update here on the penny pack. Day two of the fall trout season. I pretty much got my limit. <laughs> my friend Matt is stuck, <laughs> is stuck on the tree. <laughs> uh, anyways, I got my limit pretty much in like 10 minutes of the dam with corn, got three of them. Uh, match landed two of them on the corn and uh you know he didn't limit it out in the end so uh, but that was a good day though that was the, his first time catching some trout so i'm very proud of him you know <laughs> he learned he learned the corn technique as you guys saw it which is awesome all right so i will be here back at the penny pack tomorrow we will see how we do tie lines
all right fellas welcome to the extra contents of this video here is where I'm going to teach you a very very good technique for catching stocked trout using simple pant diagrams okay <laughs> so bear with me uh, before understanding the technique you guys will have to have at least the basic knowledge right or, or have it in your head how exactly stocked trout feed okay so let's just follow the diagrams here you have a scenario with uh, let's just say a little stream okay the current is going to the right side of the stream okay so we would say that downstream is to the right side of the of this creek and upstream is to the left and there you have just three trout laying pretty much almost all the way down okay facing against the current okay usually behind the structure that's why I drew a couple rocks and a little weird grass there okay so when it comes to trout feeding there are usually two scenarios okay the first scenario is when you have what people call a hatch okay you have bugs pretty much on top of the water alright and once you have a hatch you have those bugs on top of the water the trout kind of get attracted to it so they move above okay once they see that those bugs are edible and those bugs are good they go there and you know you have that top water trout bite where they pretty much lunge get a bug and come back okay scenario number two is when you have bugs maybe bugs falling from the tree okay into the water so in this case I just decided to use mealworms okay <laughs> let's say that out of nowhere two mealworms just fell in the water what happens is the trout they know something fell right they feel the vibration they go and they check it out but before eating the bug this is the interesting part they will always do two things first okay if there's only there if there's more than one bug falling in the water or any type of bait any type of insect the rainbow trout is actually very very wary of its surroundings so if there is more than one of something falling in the water they can actually compare that objects falling ratio okay so the first thing that the trout is going to do when he sees something falling in the water he's going to see if all those things are falling at the same rate okay the same thing, the, sa the second thing that he, he, the trout is going to do when he approaches its food, he will look at its food very carefully and also at its surroundings, okay? And only, only if these two aspects, you know, are good, okay? The trout is falling naturally and there's nothing on its surrounding, its behave, it's behaving as natural as possible, that's when you actually have your trout inhale the bait. So now that you know a little bit about the basics of uh, trout feeding, you know, stocked trout feeding, right, we are going to talk a little bit about the corn technique. So let's picture our scenario number two. Now you have the same scenario as scenario number one, just that you just cast your line in the water with a little piece of corn, okay? And in this scenario I'm using the color brown for the corn instead of yellow because so because you know it's more visible for you guys to understand okay and black is the line so as soon as you cast the line in the water right black the corn splashes on top of the water the water surface and then of course due to gravity your bait starts to fall in the water right it starts to sink right uh, notice at this point that I also always use fluorocarbon when fishing for trout okay because it sinks better okay but anyways as your bait starts sinking and sinking and sinking the trout will notice that you know there's food in the water so they gotta go and check out your bait your piece of corn and this is where this is when two things happen okay first the trout are going to check if there's just like before they're going to check if there's anything surrounding this base that it doesn't look very right okay and this is where your finesse application really comes into play okay if they see that your line is visible they are not going to bite that piece of kernel corn okay because they are very they are very very wary fish second if your hook is exposed if you didn't cover your whole hook with your piece of kernel corn they will not bite it 
either okay and that's why when fishing for trout always make sure to use very 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 small hooks okay so you can actually put all your bait on your hook and not leave it even a little bit exposed okay so if, if the trout detects that either there's a line attached to the sting or your hook is exposed they pretty much just gotta turn away you know and you pretty much failed your attempt in catching the trout okay so as you guys can see a single piece of kernel corn in the water doesn't do as much okay unless the fish is really ignorant if the fish is really ignorant never saw a piece of kernel corn before fell in the water maybe it will hit it okay but usually usually they are very very they're much much more wary than that okay so in this case we have to do something about the fish's wariness okay they are just they, they know so much about the surroundings we have to catch them off guard that's what the corn technique is all about so let's picture the scenario number three now okay we have the same scenario as we had as the number one the trout just sitting there nicely this time we are not gonna throw one piece of kernel corn in the water with our line at all just imagine that you would be chumming bait to these trout to eat just like usually you do with the carp you know every time you go carping you chum for the carp right same idea here we're gonna chum for the trout so let's say that I threw five pieces of kernel corn in the water okay black five pieces once they hit the surface of the water right they all gonna hit it pretty much around the same time right so you have an even distribution of kernel corn and also almost the same falling ratio when they fall they stay very close to each other as you can see once the bait gets sinks and sinks the trout are going to start noticing that there's food in the water but this time notice there is no hook there is no line so all the bait there is safe and sound not in its surroundings so the trout are just going to close in and eat all those corn so as you guys can see you know chumming is really just feeding the fish for free right you chum something in the water the, any type of fish goes there right they go there and they see wow this thing's actually cool and it's edible so they would just eat one by one until all the bait disappears and that's why when using the corn technique we need to use the chumming as a weapon okay and you guys are going to understand this very soon so let's go back scenario number four okay scenario number four there you go as you guys can see we did the same thing as we did in scenario number three we threw five pieces of kernel corn in the water okay the kernel corn hit the surface of the water almost at the same time it's sinking good uniformly now this is a difference after those kernel corns it starts to sink okay this is what you do you get a very small hook usually size six and above cover it with one piece of kernel corn very small very very thin line okay folks maybe two pounds to four pounds fluorocarbon so it's very finesse hard to detect and you are going to throw that a couple seconds after you threw your chum in okay and why do you want to do that a couple seconds after you did it and not at the same time as the chum that is very easy to answer right it is because your kernel corn the one that has your hook inside has a higher mass it's heavier so if you throw the chum and that corn with the hook at the same time your kernel corn in your hook is going to sink faster so they are not going to sink at the same distance at the same depth okay so this is what you want to do you want to like I mentioned you want to chum your corn first wait a couple seconds and then you throw your line with your corn in the water okay so when they sink in front of the trout and the trout gets attracted to the corn your hook with your corn should be almost at the same depth as your chum okay and this is where the magic happens folks what happens is the trout start feeding on the corn okay and once they start feeding on the corn the ones without your hook they start to realize wow this thing is edible it's yummy it's delicious we can eat it that's where we call them off guard okay remember folks for any species of fish they can be as wary as they can be very 
having an awesome awareness of their surroundings. You can catch them off guard when they enter a feeding frenzy. So this is what you want to do with the corn technique. You want to get them into a feeding frenzy. Once they, it's like Pavlovian conditioning. Once they get the first kernel corn and they see, wow, this is yummy and good to it, they're going to get the second one. Once they get the second one, they're gonna get the third one. They are opportunistic feeders, you know? They're like, wow, food is available, let's eat right now. Eat as much as we can. And they're gonna deplete all the kernel corns without your hook until finally you get that one fish that is so delusional at the moment, just thinking about food, 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 that he didn't even think about seeing your line, your four pound test line, or that your bait is actually falling faster than the other pieces, okay? That's the time that you hook the fish. After you hook the fish, of course, the other fish are going to get spooked, right? They're not ignorant of that, but you have landed your trout, okay? So this is the corn technique for stocked rainbow trout, okay? It, it, it works on the premises that stocked rainbow trout have a very good, very good awareness of their surroundings, okay? So you have to chum to catch them off guard, all right, folks? Anyways, I hope you enjoy my little paint diagrams. It took quite a while to make them, you know? But I think this is one of the best educational ways, you know? I mean, this is one of the best didactic ways, right? To teach folks, you know? You can actually see what's going on so you can, in, you know, you can imprint it in your head because when you fish, this is what you must do. You have to be very pictorial, okay? Einstein, one of the greatest scientists, okay, of our time, he, he was very pictorial, okay? And being pictorial helps a lot in our sport. If you can, if you can picture, if you can imagine what goes on down there, how, how fish behave, how fish feed, you can catch them, okay? So, all right, thanks for watching this extra contents of my video. Hopefully, next time you go out there, you are going to use the corn technique and catch yourself some stocked trout for eating. All right, thank you. Tie lines, I'll see you next video.